Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today I'm doing another entry in my Code Companion series, which talks about and breaks down some of the code projects that I post on the Chain Tutorials website that uh, help break down some of the core cryptocurrency concepts and solve some little interesting problems that I want to tinker with. So today I'm going to be talking about a companion to my older project, uh, Microbit Adder, which generates offline address key pairs. So that project uh, goes in and allows a user to generate a new uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, or Ethereum address that is totally offline. And that's a really great secure way to do long-term savings with cryptocurrencies. However, since you're keeping your private keys away from prying eyes, uh, one of the downsides is you also don't have ready access to your balance unless you use uh, what is called a watch address in a wallet. So some wallets offer this functionality where you're able to just add an address without a private key so you can actually just keep track of your balances from your hardware or paper wallets. And what I wanted to build was a little uh, lightweight standalone version of that built using a microcontroller. So for this project, I am using the Wi-Fi enabled uh, ESP8266 platform. And this particular one is an uh, Adafruit Feather Huzzah. So this processor has uh, the built-in capability of connecting to a wireless network, and that allows me to fetch uh, live address balance data without having to be connected to a networked PC. And I thought that was kind of interesting, uh, but it also, like many other projects that I work on, provided some interesting challenges. Now, the first thing that I worked on with this was simply figuring out how to get connected to the internet using this microcontroller platform. And thankfully, this is pretty simple with MicroPython. Uh, again, like my other microcontroller projects that I've tinkered with, uh, I decided to use the Python language, which usually isn't something that you think of uh, dealing at that level. Uh, there's no operating system here, but these, uh, you know, really smart developers in the electronic space have come out with distributions of Python called MicroPython and CircuitPython that allow you to use that really great high-level language in a very small package. Alternatively, I could have developed uh, this and other projects using C or C++ in Arduino, but I really like Python for its rapid prototyping capabilities and uh, simplicity for uh, newer programmers to understand. So, you know, doing uh, educational projects and uh, wanting to try new problems to solve rapidly, Python, I think, was a great choice. And so to connect with a network using MicroPython, you simply import a network library. So MicroPython provides this as a built-in uh, to its package. And what you do is you create a new network connection, and then you connect using the SSID or network name that you want to use and the password. So what I did was I stored this in a separate auth file. Uh, that way I could put a sample version of that in the public repository without revealing any private information about my home Wi-Fi network, which certainly wouldn't be wise. And anybody that clones the project can simply update uh, that file with their own personal information. So that was pretty straightforward. Um, getting the data surprisingly was a little bit more interesting. I started out uh, simply using the raw Bitcoin.com and BlockCypher public APIs. So these are some really nice public APIs that give you balance and blockchain and address data. Anything you could imagine that you would want to know off of these public blockchains you can get. Uh, you don't need an API key to use them, which is really, really nice because uh, that's just an added layer of complexity when you're trying to access that information, especially on one of these small platforms. But one of the challenges with tapping into that raw data was two things that I didn't necessarily expect. Well, the first one is fairly straightforward, and that's that I was tapping into these APIs in raw HTTP. 
Now this has really gone out of vogue because with HTTP, any of the information that I'm sending back and forth to the server that I'm connecting to can be exposed to a man in the middle attack. So there's no encryption uh, with that information. In this case, it poses more of a privacy risk than a security risk. Uh, we're only asking for public address data. This is data that's available on completely public, global distributed blockchains. So it's not necessarily a pure security risk. But if you're somebody using this project and you wanna connect and get information about your address balances, you might not wanna reveal the addresses, uh, especially for your long-term offline savings. That could compromise your privacy, depending on who's watching the network and what they know about uh, you and the other people connecting to it. And it's generally bad practice to tell people how much crypto you own. So the other interesting problem was these ESP8266 uh, chips in particular have a very small buffer for TLS data. So TLS is the actual underlying protocol that's being used when you see HTTPS in your web browser bar. And that's really the standard these days. TLS evolved from SSL, which was the old version of this protocol, uh, and you still hear the term SSL in, in somewhat common use. And what this does is it completely encrypts the information between the client, so the person connecting to a website or web server, and the server itself. Only you and the web server can see the information that you're looking at. I ran into problems with this because these small platforms have a very small buffer for TLS connections. Uh, they have a much smaller buffer for the data than a standard PC would, for example, or even a phone. And so even fetching JSON data, which is a pretty compact format about addresses uh, and about current price information, I was actually overflowing the buffer on this little device. And so I couldn't get the information that I needed. Uh, the price APIs are only exposed in HTTPS, which is, which is good in a lot of senses. And trying to connect to the um, address balance data in HTTPS would also overflow the buffer. I was a little bit stumped there, but what I ultimately decided to do was create my own API on top of an API. So I essentially created a proxy that I can put on my own web server that fetches the raw JSON data from Bitcoin.com, from BlockCypher, and the uh, price information that I'm getting. And I parse out only what I need and put it in a really compact format to send uh, through my own API. So my little API that runs on my web server will go out and get that data. It'll get the balance for the address that you request, it will get the current price of that particular cryptocurrency in US dollars, calculate your current USD value, and return that data back to you in a very, very compact format. I'm not even using JSON for this because I only have, only have two data entries. I'm literally just using a comma separated string. So I return the balance with eight decimal points, comma, and the current USD value. That's a very small package. And so now I'm able to fetch the data that I want over HTTPS uh, and not overflow that buffer. So kind of killing two birds with one stone, I get the information that I need in a way that is more private and secure because I'm using TLS and I'm not overflowing that buffer. So uh, there was some other fun little optimizations I could do in there. Like I decided to add uh, two threads, use multi-threading, uh, for those API fetches. It's kind of an unnecessary optimization for the scale of this, but I thought it was a fun thing to walk through and practice. So in Python, when you multi-thread, uh, you can't really use it for things that are CPU bound because Python locks the interpreter and only one thread can execute at a time anyway, but it still has value for IO bound tasks like fetching data over the network. Now, the final thing that I had to do is I really wanted this to be a standalone thing, just like micro bit adder, and not have to actually connect uh, to a PC via you know, USB and, and a serial connection on the PC to get the data. So we need a display screen. 
And this time around, instead of using the character screen that I used uh, for the bulk of my work on micro bit adder, I used this really cool uh, I2C OLED screen from Adafruit. And so this screen actually displays pixels. You can draw on it, you can add borders and all sorts of things. Uh, in this case, I'm just writing text and there's a nice little API for doing that as well. But I just love the compactness of this tiny little screen and the amount of information that you can put on there. So this supports up to three lines of text before it starts to cut off on the, on the fourth row. And I just wrote some simple little functions that initialize this screen and uh, write text using uh, the nice library that um, Adafruit provides for MicroPython. Now this uses the I2C serial protocol to communicate with the screen. There is another protocol that's popular called SPI, and uh, I'm learning about some of the pros and cons of both. Um, I've been using I2C, it just seems nice and simple, but when I went to order a backup screen for my projects, I accidentally ordered an SPI screen. So I will get this soldered up and learn how to wire it, and uh, most likely will add SPI capability to this project as well, depending on your wiring and serial communication preferences. So again, this was a really fun and interesting project, and like everything that I get to tinker with, um, both in and out of the blockchain space with these code projects, there were some interesting challenges that I didn't necessarily expect and had to overcome, and uh, I really enjoy that because I just love to tinker and learn and uh, solve problems with programming. So again, this is called Watch Adder. This is fetching live address balances and price data. Uh, I have right now on the screen the current USD balance of some addresses uh, that I was playing with, but you can also uh, configure your copy of the project to display the actual crypto balances. I'm sure there are some other interesting things that I'll add to this down the line. Uh, I always like to keep adding new features and bug fixes to these projects. And uh, it was great. I, I enjoyed working on it, and uh, I'm really glad that I have gone down this sort of a microcontroller rabbit hole since PyCon uh, in the spring. So as always, I wanna thank you very much for watching uh, these videos. There's an article that talks about this project with some code snippets on the Chain Tutorials website. And of course, there is a link to the Chain Tutorials GitHub, which has the source code available under the BSD license for you to uh, try out, tinker, modify, and share as much as you like. So as always, thank you very much for listening. I appreciate your time, and I look forward to learning with you more.